as we have come to this point, I'm sure there is, there should be a lot of hands flying up, wanting to make your contributions tonight, having your eyes opened um, to, you know, another level of revelation in the word of God. So I invite you um, to raise your hands and let's, let's talk tonight. Let's, let's have a little discussion concerning this aspect that we have just touched, this type of service, the serad, the stitching or piercing with a needle, being gifted and chosen by God for a specific task, for a specific work. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's go with um, Sister Jackie Carter is the first hand up. Sister Jackie, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good. Praise God, it's working. Today, this just blew me away. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I hear now why God kept telling me what to do. He kept telling me to write. And I'm like, yes. but that's not, and it's like, no, he gave me different gifts. So I thank you for that. I'm. You know, I'm Sister Jackie, as you mm -hmm. said, write. You see this book? 10 mm -hmm. times better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find my first, the first one that I wrote. Um, I see uh, both of them in, in Amazon. Yes, yes. I'm just trying to find a copy of the other one. Um, um, Mighty, could you send one of those books for me, the first copy, please? You know, let me tell you, in 2017, the Lord said to me, write. And here's how, here's how this, this happened. I was talking to uh, a friend of mine um, in the U.S. And um, I was just talking to her about, you know, education and, you know, different things. And she said to me, you know, prophet, you need to write. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But then after she said it, the Lord spoke to me, honestly. And he said, write the book. Listen, number one, let me tell you, number one, I'm not afraid to say it. Number one, I hate English. If I, could, if I could speak in Hebrew and Greek, I would, I would prefer to speak in Hebrew and Greek rather than English. I hate English. There is just too much, too many semantics in that business there, honestly speaking. Then after high school, high school, I failed English. Okay? I failed that business in high school. But then God said to write. Some man who hates English, failed English, write. Okay? But I started. And mm. God began to just multiply that gift, that grace inside of me. Okay? And, and this book was produced. This was the first one. Ten times oh. better. And wow. seven books later, not one, seven books later, the expanded prayer journal came. Now, mm. I'm just saying that to say, and I'm not done. Mm. I'm still going. It's, it's a grace given to, for a particular task. And if you don't own it, if you don't receive it, if you don't accept it, it will never manifest. It will never develop. It will never grow. So if say, God says, right, listen, man, start somewhere. <laughs> Can I can I can I interrupt yes, you for a second? You see that that's my play. All those books, all yes. those notebooks, that's my play. I okay. eat Shakespeare for breakfast. Oh, it's wow. something I've always been doing, yes. but I didn't take it as the gift that it is. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know what I mean? I didn't see it as oh, I gotta find something else. I gotta look. I've been looking for this, and I've been looking for that, and not my whole heart isn't in it, but my heart's in that. Yes. And you just gave me the revelation that I could do that. I could what? do what he actually is telling me to do. He's saying right, and I'm like, but right what? Right? I'm playing. This is my play. And he's yes. like, yes, and you're good at it. Wow. This is a gift. We need you. We need you because, you know, let me pause my recording for what I'm about. To... We need people like you now who can come in with the spirit of the Lord because I believe it's a gift that God gave him, but it was corrupted. 
We need people who are, who are sanctified, holy, uncorrupted, who can now write plays, write movies to the glory of God. Look at Mel Gibson for argument's sake. Out of all the movies I've ever watched on the crucifixion, Passion of the Christ beat every one of them. When you watch Passion of the Christ, it's like you are taken into the crucifixion. And you, 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 you get to see what Jesus went through. It's a gift that God has given. What if this man took on a project like called the Red Sea? Hmm? Moses in Egypt. Can you imagine Mel Gibson doing, doing, doing the Ten Commandments? Hmm? Can you imagine a Mel Gibson doing Samson? Can you imagine a Mel Gibson doing David? Because hmm? we, we, when you look at the movies that, 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 they, that, they, that they make about David, oh, David is this cute little guy. David was a bloody man. A Mel Gibson is a bloody man. Can you imagine this man yeah? writing some of these movies? That's what I'm talking about. Utilizing our gifts, our graces for the glory of God. And I pray that we will see some plays coming out, some movies coming out from you by the grace of God. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. And thank you, Jackie, for being a part of this. It's good to see your face and to put a face behind the name. So good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. So who else is there now who want to make some contributions to tonight's um, teaching? Sister Colette, go ahead. Yes, we have you there. Good night. Good night. Um, it's good to be able to, to be in class. I'm usually in class at this time, but I'm happy I have a weed in week. Um, I'm very elated by, by the teaching tonight. Um, one of the reasons being, um, I remember I had, I have the passion since I was a young girl to do hair. Yes. I would walk with comb and anywhere I go and I see somebody, I'm like, come let me comb your hair. Like, it's just a tickle for me. Like if the hair not look good or if I see a mom with girls or whoever, and they're here, you know, I would offer my services to do that and I would always do it for free. Yes. So, you know, but I, I always had that doubt within myself and say, you know, well, I, I'm not as good as this person or I'm not as good as that or I can't do certain things, you know, whatever. But as always, it doesn't matter what I do, mm -hmm. people would always appreciate it and people would always love it because they always say to me, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And it is like the, the love that you put into it and the appreciation and how the person feel after. Yes. And I've been doing, doing that all my life. I've been doing here. But there comes a point where no work was coming, nothing, nothing was, was going on. And here I am doing here for free. And the Lord said to me, what do you have in your hand? Like, what do you have in your house? And I'm sitting down there and I'm baffling with this for like a year. Like, what can I do? I can cook, but my passion is not in the cooking. And I can do a lot of things, but my passion wasn't in it. And the Lord says, go and get certified in, in, in doing your hair. But I always says, here is not my business. It's my ministry. And I've always wanted to, like, whenever I'm doing here I'm talking I'm always ministering it's like it just flows naturally it's just something like you sit in my chair and like oh my god like the, the it's like illumination and, and and everybody just gets something out of it mm -hmm. and I always notice for each client that I would have it's like it's I'm customized to them differently like each of them I'm customized to them differently. Like the Lord will speak to me differently about them or tell me how to treat them differently or, you know, like, like just different stuff. And I never looked at it and say, well, you know, now that you're, you're talking about, you know, the, the, um, the, uh, uh, I can't pronounce that it, word. <laughs> that word, you know, 
And I'm like, because even in church, like I would be working in Sunday school and I would see a mother come in with like three girls and I would go and ask her permission. Is it okay if I, you know, do this? And as long as I get the permission before Sunday school is out, I'm sitting down in some corner combing. So it's like everywhere I go, I'm doing this. Yes. So it makes sense now when you say that, because I never, I just thought it was, you know, I just do it for free because I love it. I enjoy it. But I never thought, you know, I just look at it as a way where I minister to people with what God gifted me with. So thank you for, for illuminating that for me. I, I really, it really speaks to what I'm doing and encourage me to continue. Because I always say, like I said, it's not my business. It's my ministry. So, yes. Yeah. And right there, you have an opportunity to share Christ. Absolutely. You know, right there, you have an opportunity to pray for people. Because, you know, people, listen, people are going through so much. Just even a word of prayer. You know, yeah. but one of the things that, you know, is, is lacking today is, you know, as, 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 as men of God, as women of God, you don't want any and anybody putting their hand in your head. Um, and, <laughs> That True. because you can't do better. True. Because you can't find the Christian ones. You have yes. to go at these places. And then yeah. before they put their hand in your head, you there praying in your heart, Lord, sanctify his hands. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's how I am as a as a as a person when it comes to here. I don't let anybody, any and anybody touch my head. So I delicate area. Yeah, it is. And I, I understand because it happened to me before when I was younger, I used to have long lush hair and some lady out of nowhere, well, not out of nowhere. She went to my mom's church and she combed my hair. And when I took out the cornrows out of my hair, my hair was gone, like fall First off. Time. I couldn't even catch my hair in one. And Don't my hair has know. never, yes, I've never been the same since then and from then i i i told myself no nobody well, will ever so I understand. That whatever happened to you In when Jesus that woman name. touched you come on put your hand on your head for me whatever happened to you when the hand of that woman touched you In we Jesus break name. that curse now in the name of Amen. jesus Hallelujah. and we command your glory restored to you Hallelujah. Any destiny that was tampered with we command it restored by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Thank you, we Jesus. decree the glory and the grace and the gift of God that is oh, upon yeah. you to work in this area and to, and to manifest the glory of God in this area. Thank now you. to overtake you in the mighty name thank of Jesus man. Christ. Amen. We thank you, Father, for restoration thank in Jesus' Jesus. name. Amen. 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 You see thank your you, hands. Lord. Feet. Sorry, your your head and your feet and yes. your are, th are three areas that are very critical. And let me let mm -hmm. me just go into deliverance just a little bit. Your head represents your crown. This is your glory. This is this represents the glory and the crown of your life. When people talk about your star, they're talking about your head. What is upon your head? The grace that is upon your head. The glory. That is upon your head. That thing that you were born to do, to be, to become. That's yes. what your head represents. Your hands represents your skill, your work, the gifts that God has given to you. And your feet represents your progress. Yes? And so those areas are very critical that you must know who is laying hands upon you. Who is touching you? How are they touching you? Mm -hmm. You understand? These, these are critical areas, you know, and, um, you know, there are others, but let me just stick to, to those. By, by Amen. God. Amen. So now that you have seen that, I mean, maybe you need to revisit that area mm -hmm. of, you know, doing the hair business there. And, and who knows, God may very well give you a saloon and a chain of saloon. <laughs> Amen. Don't, don't <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, God has God also has, has given me where I, I create oils, custom oils for, for my clients as well. Come on now. Come I've on. I've done I've I've been doing that, but 
is I'm happy you prayed the way you did just now because even though I did that, but I have not moved forward forward in it. I only do it by request for those persons who know that I'm doing it. No, but, but when I have, yeah, we have to go a little bit further now. Eh? We have to take it a bit further because these gifts. You see how the devil works. He these are the gifts that God has given to you for the service of his kingdom. Eh? Mm, and but the devil attacks you in these areas so that you don't have interest in these areas. But these are the areas where your millions are located. And we are there praying to God, oh God, bless me. Oh God, give me ideas. And God is saying, but my spirit is in you for a particular thing. Can you imagine you are making oils that are filled with the glory of God, that when those oils go out and touch people's body, hmm, the anointing of God comes upon them. And people who, who never thought about Jesus will now yeah. be thinking about Jesus. <laughs> huh? Come on, we have to get crazy in this house. <laughs> that is exactly oils, that is my vision oils, eh? that oils, is, and, oh and, my in the, and in the kingdom of darkness do you know they're doing it in the kingdom of darkness <laughs> oil of hold me, oil of conqueror oil of get the man oil of hold the woman oh my oil of, god oil of pull him, oil of pull him down. all kind of this is divine gods. this is divine this is divine that, well in the oh kingdom god. of god we could be making some glory oils Hmm? And, 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 and tell you, look, come, come massage yourself with, 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 with the glory oil. <laughs> Spike nard and not, listen, I, yes. I, I can't even tell you. But when you the burst that, that inside, I there is a anybody. heavenly yes. smell you're smelling. Oh not my so God. Spike nard, frankincense, myrrh, all of, I have all of them. I'm, yes. Oh my God. So that, yes. yes, and God will give you understanding how to mix these things. Yes, yes. I have no idea about them things there. All I know is how to go into the word and bring out revelation. <laughs> gift. You understand? You have the gift of oil. Yes, it's a gift though. So Amen. tap into it. Use it to the glory of God and see where God will take you with it. Don't Amen. limit God. Come on. Yes. Don't limit him. Yes. Don't Amen. limit him at all. Hallelujah. Thank you so Amen. much. Bless you, yes. Prophet. All right. Sister Vernet. Hi, good evening, Prophet. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight's teaching was really an eye-opener um, because like you said, most times when we think of gifts, we think of what is said to us in the book of Corinthians. Um, we may see the work that we do as skill, but most of the time we really do not attribute it to, to God and, you know, to give him all the glory that is due to him when it comes to those gifts and talents. Yes. And um, for me, a couple of years back, I was praying in regards to business and for me to enter into a business and praying to God to direct me. And when he gave me the business, I started it. And it is called cacti creations. It is using cactus and succulents to make arrangements. And it is truly a gift and a talent. Now, I was not trained in arrangement making. If you give me cut flowers and you give me those things to make an arrangement, I cannot do it for you. But I will go into my nursery. I will stand. I will look at the pot, whatever it is. The client will give me a pot. It doesn't matter what I'm given. And I will walk around the nursery and I will choose the plants. And when I'm done, I will stand back and I will look at it. If it's not good, I will know it's not good. And when it is finished, it is well finished. And that is, that is a gift of the Holy Spirit that he has given to me. And you know, you saying that is just bringing confirmation that this is an area God has truly gifted me because persons would would try to do it and you would just put some succulents put some stuff together and it is just not the same you know it, it's an understanding it's like an art and I tell people it's an art in what you're doing and understanding it and I had no training the minute I started it was like I just 
went full swing into it without any issue and anything. And I mean, I myself was amazed. Sometimes when I look at the pictures of what I do, I use stones, I use the colors, I use colored sand, try to blend the colors, the heights, and you know, all of those things. And it comes out real beautiful. And the purpose of it is to bring beauty to people, bring beauty to their homes, their families, their offices, and all of that. And when I send them out, I send it out with prayer that it will bring that beauty, that they will see the beauty of God, you know? And it's truly, as you're talking about it, it is truly something God has really stitched and put in me that I didn't even know that was there. I mean, I've been in the agricultural field for 30 something years and I understand production. I understand all of those aspects of, of agriculture, but that component was something God just blessed me with instantly. And it's truly amazing. And this teaching really helps me, mm -hmm. you know, understand that aspect of God. And it's amazing to hear about, you know, the jewelry component. And a lot of times as Christians, you know, we're really not taught right in terms of jewelry and wearing of jewelry, et cetera, et cetera. But to understand it from that perspective, it was truly amazing. So I'm really thankful for the teaching tonight. and. I thank you. You're welcome. And I yeah. pray you will pursue <laughs> the grace that God has put upon you. Thank yes. you. Pursue the grace. You see, sometimes, you know, thank God for the internet. Sometimes the, the clientele that we're looking for is not within our immediate circle. Mm -hmm. But the internet has a way of connecting us. Yes? Mm -hmm. It has a way of connecting us. So, Start putting your work out there. Start, let's start using the mediums that are out there to advertise. Yes, the Instagram, the the Facebook. You know, put your creations out there. Well, I do. I have an Instagram page and I do use Facebook market page. But because of the nature of it, you know, going, I'm not saying no, but I'm saying in terms of um, because it's plants and it's it's perishable and stuff. You know, so that would be that, you know, when you put these images, and I'm not just talking mm -hmm. to you, to every one of us, when mm -hmm. we put images out there, we don't know how far they will reach. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so it might not be within your circle that you are mm -hmm. doing it, but you might be called somewhere to come and do this thing. Okay, I get you. you. Understand well, I have gotten persons from like St. Vincent and the other Caribbean islands who have seen it and wanted it, but when they realize I'm in St. Lucia. Then they say, oh, you know, that, you know, it's not possible. So I understand exactly what you're saying. Everything yeah. is possible with God. Believe you me. <laughs> Everything. Amen. Yeah. Don't Amen. ever, don't let us limit ourselves. Let's remove limitation. Yes. Every problem calls for a solution. And in my book, 10 times better. Yes. Yes. Where is that chapter for God's sake? Uh, come on, open up. Yes, chapter number three, day number three, anointed for solution. Amen. God can give us the ability to solve problems. So if the distance is a problem, God, how, how can I solve this issue of distance? Eh? Who knows what God might give you Amen. In, in, that, in that regard? <laughs> Glory to God. All Thank right. you. Okay. Amen. Working with cactus and cacti. Me, I don't want nothing to juke up my finger. I can't work with that. Glory to God. That grace is given to Sister Vernon. Amen. Sister Fanny, welcome. Okay. Yes. Good evening, Prophet. <laughs> I have a problem. The thing is, when I was at school, secondary school, yes. I would be writing short stories right. and I would get um, prizes for short stories I wrote, yes. especially within the islands, Martinique, Guadeloupe, Dominica. Now, I started writing two stories, mm -hmm. but it would seem I cannot continue. And you spoke tonight about feet signify progress. Yes. I remember when I was at university, there was a woman, a girl in the same class with me from um, Guyana, not Guyana, um, 
Honduras. Yes. And one night I missed my shoe. Oh, wow. I couldn't understand where the shoe was. The next day I see her bringing the shoe and putting it in my cupboard. I'm wondering, I said, but why did you take my shoe? And it's like, I find out in myself, I, I don't, I start something and I can't continue, especially in, in areas where it will help me progress mm -hmm. exact in my skills and my talents, you know, that kind of thing. I yes. don't know if that was, there was something, you know? Of course. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you read my book 10 times better, like, what, what, 10 times better mm -hmm. coming out tonight. Yes. Wow. You read the very first one. I spoke mm -hmm. about something called contagious magic. Right. Mm -hmm. That's in the very first um, book where we talk about witchcraft manipulations. And I spoke about contagious magic and how people take items that belong to you and then use those items and bring um, you know, the siege of the enemy and the delay of the enemy and the oppression of the enemy upon your life. And so that's, that's a serious thing. That's not something to take lightly. So let's deal with it by the grace of God. And I want you to believe that as we pray, even now, the power of God will just destroy anything that might have been done to bring a limitation to your life. And whatever was stolen from you and given to that woman, we take it back in the mighty name of Jesus. So we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I enter into the spirit by your Holy Spirit. I lay my hands upon the feet of your daughter right now. And Lord, I ask you to touch now even that very shoe, wherever it is, whether it has been destroyed already, Lord, or whether it is still present somewhere in some dump or something. Father, my God, put your hand also upon your daughter's feet. And in the name of Jesus, we break every curse. We break every contagious magic. We break every witchcraft power. We break every spell. We command any swap that took place in the realm of the spirit right now. We cancel in the mighty name of Jesus. We locate that woman wherever she is. And we take back what belongs to you and we return it to you through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we decree now by the power of the Holy Ghost that every chain that is upon you is now broken. Every power of darkness that has acted as a smear against your life is now destroyed. And we release you now in the name of Jesus that even at this stage of your life, you will still accomplish great things in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for your deliverance and for your freedom. And we decree now progress in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So start writing. Start writing those short stories. Yeah. Yes. You don't know where that may end up. Yes. But Amen. do what is in thine heart to do by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Uh, Glory to God. Sister Angelita. Good night, Prophet. Good night, everyone. Um, for myself tonight, I think um, I've, been, I've been talking a great deal about how things have shifted in, in terms of what God actually meant for us to do. And I'm, I'm alluding specifically to the, the jewelry aspect of it. Because a lot of these denominational things that have been created, that have somewhat brought the division in the kingdom of God, has caused a lot of us to, to, to be blinded to the truth of what God has, has made for us to enjoy, for us to, to wear to glorify him. And so for me tonight, um, that, that jewelry piece really set... Um, an awakening in my spirit, because there's a time when I felt like, um, based on the, the church that I've joined, you can't wear jewelry and you can't wear this and you can't wear that. And, and sometimes we get caught up in those, in those, um, things or those spirit that, that allow your mind to become 
in tied up in bondage, so to speak, because now you're focusing on what you should wear, what you shouldn't wear, and all all sorts of things, and not focusing on what God actually. Because if somebody created jewelry, they created it because God gave them the idea and the wisdom to do it. But we have made so many restrictions that have caused us to even even the very attire that we wear. I find that um, we have somewhat. And I'm going to take this one personally. I'm not saying it for anybody else, but I'm saying it for me. When you look on TV and you see a lot of these um, modeling shows that go on and you see who is the creator of these clothes is, is a lot of ungodly people. We're quick to go out there and buy it, but we're not quick to support the, the Christian sister who is, who is making those clothes. Um, and sometimes we don't, we, we are against each other in that aspect of it. And that is how the enemy has brought division in there. Me, I can't sew, I can't sew nothing Just, to save not, my you're life. Not, right, you're not buying, you're not buying clothes. That's not what people are buying. People are not buying clothes. People are buying brand. People are buying a right. name. Image. That's what right. people buy. People buy names. Okay. Right. So, so that you can, you can look at, look at um, Kanye West came up with Yeezy. I think Yeezy mm -hmm. is one of the most ugly things ever. Those those clothes are ugly. But yeah, people people buy it. You understand? Oh, shucks, this is recorded. But people buy it, you understand? Because they're not buying clothes. They're buying a name. Right. And who is associated with the name. That's what they're buying. Right. Now, if, if we understand that, for example, jewelry is, is, is a symbol of value, it's a symbol of durability. It's a symbol right. of wealth. It's a symbol of beauty, right? If we understand this, right, then we will begin to see these things differently rather than having a religious mindset about right. things that God has created, okay? So we, we need to tap into the grace that God has given to us. I, I would love to, to go there and see jewelry that don't have no demonic undertone. When, when we study cults mm -hmm. and occultic symbols, because some of right. you don't know, some simple things that you think are safe, they are not safe. They are you not. understand? Simple things that you think are safe, they are not safe. They are, they, are, they are demonic gateways. They are signs and signets that represent something deep and esoteric. You understand? So if we get Christians to go into these areas and the glory of God inspiring the grace that God has deposited inside of you. My God, you can, you, you can, you can just imagine what will come out. And, and we spoke about the, 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 the Urim and the Thummim that the priest wore. That was inspired by God. God inspired that. That was an item of clothing and jewelry together. God inspired that. You understand? Right. Yes? You talk about the priestly garments. God inspired that. You talk about the way the Israelites dress. God inspired their dressing. Right. right. Come on now. Yeah? So where, where is the inspiration of the church in these industries? We have the gifts. We have the grace. But we have not been taught that these things are gifts and graces from God. So we don't pay right. them any attention. We don't pay them any mind. Yeah? And in so, fact, I think Prophet... Sorry, I think what? in fact what we have actually done, we have stepped back from those industries because mm -hmm. of the lack of knowledge and the lack of teaching in those areas. Um, because just as you mentioned last week about the, the, the government, a lot of people tell tell their kids that's not the area they should go in. When in essence, if we continue to allow the ungodly to infiltrate those areas, we're gonna have ungodly um yes. laws and things that are set out before us that we have to live by. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's the same thing when you look at even even the teaching today with with the, the attire and all those those kind of stuff. We tend to um, and I think it's sister sister Vernet, I think it was talk about the flowers. There are ideas that God will give you. She can even do a course where she she may be in St. Lucia, but she can do a course where she teach people how to put these things together in other countries, um, right? And and still have money coming into her in that aspect of it. So there, there I, th I believe we, and I'm going to speak for myself again, not everybody here, that we have um, put God in such a box 
that he's trying to get us out of the box to use us, and we're still fighting to stay in the box. And I believe that he has also opened up the social media arena for us to be able to get ourselves out there so that people know that the kingdom is for real. And the things that we do, the business we encounter, it's about God and it's about what he wants to get the glory out of and out of our lives also. So tonight's teaching, I thank you, Prophet, because it's it, there's there's a lot in this that um, that is to be digest. And, and for sure, it's, it's that piece where we have these things um these gifts or these abilities to do things and sometimes we just want to do do it shorthandedly and not go all out with it and i'm speaking to myself on that note um and so that that is my my um share for tonight our contribution for tonight i really appreciate the teaching um because it it is definitely an awakening that hey listen we're in this time right now we don't know when the lord is coming but we need to we need to shine for his kingdom and shine so that people know that hey listen there's a greater thing for us to do here and 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 for him to get the glory out of so that's my contribution absolutely thank you so much Thank you so much. Chick-fil-A. Many of you know Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is a Christian store, a Christian fast food store. They don't open on Sundays because they say they honor God on Sundays. And they have been cursed out, criticized, called all kinds of things. Yet at the end of every year, Chick-fil-A still making millions of dollars. Have you ever eaten a Chick-fil-A sandwich? I have, by the grace of God. And that thing tastes good, eh? Yes, especially their sauces. So God has given them grace in the food realm. Listen to me. We are not limiting ourselves by the grace of God. Sister Naomi, go ahead. Yes, you're unmuted. You can speak. Uh, oh, I'm not hearing you. Not sure what is wrong with your mic. See if we can find the correct microphone. Maybe the mic is not selected on the system. So while you're fixing that, let's take somebody else in the interim. All right, Sister Dion, come. While well, Sister Naomi is working on the mic issue. Are you hearing me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay. As you were talking about, um, everybody talking about like the shoes and all them stuff. Um, I see myself, I know I am a very good singer and I write really good songs. Yes. And in the past, I wrote the songs and go to the studio and everything. Mm -hmm. It sounds really good and I can't get to put it on the air. All right. Since I'm living for the Lord and everything, I write some really nice gospel songs. Yes. And I haven't gone to get the music done and everything. And then when I was supposed to go back to record it, the person, so something was wrong with the, the, the music. So it's like I have all these nice, beautiful songs written. I can mm -hmm. sing it. I know musicians and everything, but it's just not moving. It's just not moving, and, and I'm saying, what's this? And I know it's, it, I know it's an attack. All right. So, so let's test it. Sing for us. No, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put you on the spot. Like, give us something. Let's, let's break this barrier tonight. Give us something. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know, when, I, when there's... It just happened in stuck and you go up your brain go blank. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. I don't know what what must I say now? <laughs> okay, all right. Tell you what. Sing Jesus love me this I know for us. That, 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 that's easy. Yeah. Go 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 ahead with that one. Jesus loves me. This I know. Oh, I will tell me so, little ones, to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong, 
Yes, Jesus loves me. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Glory Just, room, what you say? Does she pass? Does she get her pass, Glory Room? Can we can can we pray for her so that this 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 blows up? Eh, what what says Glory Room? Come on, you be the judge of this tonight. Eh? Glory Room got talent. Come on, does she? Yes. Does she, yes. <laughs> Hell? Yes. <laughs> where, where, where are the musicians here? Eh? Come on. Is, is it? Eh? The, what, what says the audience? Eh? Should I give her the golden buzzer? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, here is your daughter tonight. Lord, the ability to sing, the desire to sing, the desire to worship. Father, we open the door now so that worship can echo forth from your daughter. We decree now that everything that has blocked her, everything that has hindered her, Radamando Rebendo We put now every barrier, every obstacle, every hindrance, everything the enemy has done to sabotage your voice of worship. We command right now that it be broken in the name of Jesus. And we release the gift of God that is in you. We release the grace of God that is in you. We release the anointing of God and the gifts of singing and music and worship that is in you. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for your glory that is upon your daughter. In Jesus' name, let it manifest to your glory, Father. Position her. Mighty God in the kingdom where her gift can be utilized in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Glory to my proof. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I love the sound of that. I know because you're nervous. Yeah, but I I, I okay. see it. I see it and I hear it. Glory. Yeah, thank you. Pursue your gift. Don't stop pursuing it. Continue to write. Yes? Amen. To write. And continue to do what God wants you to do. Yes? You, you never Amen. know where it might go. You might just need to, to open a channel. Hmm? Yes? A YouTube okay. channel. Or come on Facebook. <laughs> Cut to tune in a cappella for people. Yes? And you'll be surprised to see how your followers grow. And you'll be surprised to see how someone wants to sign you. You never know. Yes? You never know. I'm telling you, you never know. I, I, I keep saying, eh? I keep saying, one of these books will make me a millionaire. I don't know which one, but one of them go make me a millionaire. And one day you're going to hear Amazon blowing up. And whose name blowing up Amazon? Bernard Delon. Just wait. Amen. Just wait. Amen. One of these days. Eh? Yes, because the Bible says your gift shall make room for you. By the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Naomi, did you fix the mic issue? No, still not hearing her. Prophetess, go ahead. Good night, Prophet. Um, actually, I just want to make a contribution based on what Sister Henry said. Yes. Um, you know, in regards to Christian businesses, as a business owner myself, right. and one of the things that I've noticed, man of God, is that, and I, I want to be very careful <laughs> because I want us to understand that as a Christian business, it don't mean that Christians will support us, but we have to be excellent in whatever we do. Absolutely. I've noticed that some Christian businesses, man of God, that, you know, the operandum, the way they do things, mm -hmm. are very sloppy. It's not done with excellence. It's not done, you know, um, with in you know an air to build their clientele. It's done because you believe that you're a believer, and I'm just saying that because I've seen it. Mm -hmm. You believe that because you're a believer that you know God is the one who called in that business, so anything goes. It's wash your foot and come in. Hmm. And that is the wrong mindset to have. And I believe that the mindset is, import is important in going yes. forward, in elevation. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I attract, my clothing is not 
clothing that dress. I don't sell skimpy clothing. I don't sell clothing that, you know, exposes your body and all of that because I don't support that. I don't subscribe to that. So I don't sell that. Right. But I attract a lot of women that are not believers. I attract a lot of people that are unbelievers. I attract more unbelievers than I attract believers. And, and you know, sad? it is sad, man of God, it is. Because, because but one of this, yeah. you know, go ahead. No, go I'm, ahead, saying, man of God. I'm saying we teach modesty, but we can't identify it. Right. And yeah. it's not, and the thing about that now, I don't just sell clothing, but I also do training. I also do consultation to women because I, I help them to dress their body type. We all have different types here. We have the pear shape, apple, you know, all different type of women. And I teach them on how to dress their shape, how to yes. dress their type. So, so you're saying and... your shape. <laughs> Come on, so... say it. Say it. Own your shape. Where, where your are shape. You have you have to. You have to know shape. how to dress it. Diamond shape. What is shape them go again? What is shape you them have go? Pear shape. Pear you have shape. Apple shape. Apple shape. Mm -hmm. What else? <laughs> Man, <I'm going. laughs> Come on. No, no, no. We're helping some women tonight. You know why I'm saying this? Because women, because of the 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 the, the spirits that are in the industry, the clothing right. industry, these homosexual spirits hmm. that want to make women, curvy women, look like stick. Now, where are, where are the men inside of this place? I'm not alone. Men love curves. Eh? Yes, men love curves. Real men love curves. We want to see curves. We don't want to see no stick because we are already the stick. Yes? So own your shape, whether you peer, whether you apple, whether you breadfruit, plum, pineapple, <laughs> whether you banana, right, or, or whether you be lizard, whatever shape you have, <laughs> own your shape by the grace of God. Anyway, go ahead, prophetess. I just wanted yeah. to say, yes, <laughs> um, can yes, shape no matter yes. what. Shape. Yes, yeah. Prophet. So, um, you know, we have a lot of women who have different shapes and they come in not yes. knowing how to dress their shape, not knowing how to identify with, you know, what to wear and all of that. But again, as I said, um, you know, I have more women that are unbelievers than, than believers. Mm -hmm. A lot of Christian, Christian women, kingdom women, they don't they, they they go to unbelievers to purchase the tight clothing you know they go to 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 believe the unbelievers to purchase whatever that they're purchasing from them right okay. or they may have their reasons why i don't know but i'm just saying that there are a lot of different reasons why they go to the unbelievers mm -hmm. but again for me i believe in excellence i believe whatever you do you have to be excellent at it because you want to attract different crowd of people you yes. can't have a business and ex and just figure out that I'm going to attract um, the low class, I'm going to attract the, the less fortunate, I'm going to attract, you have to, you have to have a business mindset that you're going to attract, you know, the different level, the upper class, the middle class, every level, and you have to be able to, um, to able to support whatever, you know, package that comes before you. And, Absolutely. you know, so again, that's, that's one of these areas I wanted to just, to just, um, to touch on, you know, we have to make sure that excellence is our standard, our foundation, when you're going forward in our gift, it's not just saying, okay, God gave me a gift. Yes, he gave you a gift, but at the end of the day, you have to be able to harness that gift properly. And by having a spirit of excellence is one of the ways that you're going to harness that gift effectively and properly. Amen. Because it's not just coming with your gift and anyhow goes. No, you have to do it well. I believe in excellence. I believe how you dress, how you carry yourself, even in going to the house of God. Oh my God, I can't emphasize on that enough. Even how you enter the house of God. When, we, when I was in the world and I would go to party, I would go out, I would ensure that I have the right outfit to go and the shoes to match and everything had to be on point. So when I'm going to meet my father, my king, why do I have to feel like it has to be less? It has to be less. You know, and that's something that we, whenever we come to kingdom, we always throw aside our excellence and we come anyhow, wash our foot and come in. And that's something I'm very passionate about because I believe as a child of God, you have to represent your father. Your father is an ex 
excellent God. He's the king above all earthly kings. Amen. At the end of the day, the gold and the silver is his. The cattle of a thousand years is his. So why do you have to represent? If you are a child of that king, oh my God, you have to represent him. Do you see Prince Harry dressing like a, like a papa? No. Do you see, exactly. Do you see, no. you know, you don't see that. You see them dressing the role, the part that they play as the, as part of the hierarchy. They don't, they don't dress less than, they dress as, as such. And, you know, that's something that we have to able to develop as believers, you know, dress as we supposed to, as a child of God. Amen. Keep your hair, keep yourself, put a little lipstick now and again as a, as a woman, even sometime in your home, in your marriage. You know, these are things that we have to spice up. I mean, prophet, I know we're going, I, I don't want to go too much. Well, go I am, I am. But, <laughs> but I'm just saying that as, as women, you know, we have to be able to spice up our relationship. Amen. Put, buy a lingerie, do something out of the box, you know, ensure that your spouse is satisfied, is happy. And that's something that we have to, and I see that a lot of times when we, we become believers, and, and I'm not saying we, because I'm not part of that box, trust me. But when you become, when, you know, persons become believers, what happens is that, you know, they just put away everything that makes them exciting, everything that makes them, you know, um, have that excellent spirit and that zeal, you know, not just for God, but for the things around them. They just put it aside and they just become this boring person, this person that all, you know, so holy that life itself just evades. And that should not be a strain of God. You know, we should not have the people of the world. And that's why a lot of persons in the world say, I don't want to become a Christian. A Christian life is boring. It's not boring. Sometimes we make it boring because of what we do, how we carry ourselves, how we, you know, we make it boring. You know, mm -hmm. you have, you have that. Okay. For example, man of God, um, even when I have customers who come to me, like I have women who come to me all the time and, you know, they are, they are married women, but they are not Christian women. Yeah. And you would hear them speaking and they would say, you know, a lot of times they would say, I have to get a new lingerie because it's my husband, it's our anniversary of my husband's birthday. And you would hear a Christian woman coming and you would hear the opposite. Oh, it's my husband's birthday. Um, uh, I don't know what we're gonna do tonight. Um, uh, I think I'll just go to dinner. Um, you know, you'd recommend, but why don't you get a lingerie? A lingerie, why would I get a lingerie? Like, uh, why would like you know, you would hear these comments and you could just see that the mindset of these women are just whack. Sorry to use that word, man of God, but it is because, you know, we don't know how to, again, as I'm Jackie said, it's religion, it's religion. And religion has really, you know, contaminated the minds of, of individuals. And man of God, trust me, I believe that that is something that we need to be debunked as believers, you know, going forward. You know, mm -hmm. even in Christian businesses, we have to be able to ensure that even when we go, we have a store, we have a, a, a snack it. I can't come to your snack it and there's flies all over because you're a Christian business, business. I have to support you. No, I want to ensure that, you know, um, whatever I eat is hygiene. I mean, my, the hygiene of that place has been met the standards. So at the end of the day, you know, we can't expect persons to come into our business and support our business, but yet still, we don't uphold the standards that is required because you go in the non the non Christian businesses and their standards are very highly met. Mm -hmm. You know they are very their standards are very highly met. These places are well decorated. You know these places are well freshly painted. They look good. You know so if I have to choose between a place who looks good in terms of hygiene and a place that doesn't, I will more or less gravitate. I will most likely gravitate to the one that looks good because mm -hmm. as a prophet, cleanliness order is something that I'm very big on, I'm very, you know, and you know that man of God, you know, so that's just what it is. It, it is what it is, standard excellence and glory. Amen. We need, we need to reflect glory. And um, again, it's because of how we have been taught. It's how we have been taught that have produced the results that we see, honestly speaking. And we, we were here must never be held captive by a religious mindset. And where religion is trying to hold us captive 
we must never give it that opportunity. Never. I remember. As I can remember, I have talent, I have skills, and I figured it must, I should be, I should be making my own money, doing my own thing, making my own money. And uh, um, since I was 12, I am 40 now. Since mm -hmm. I was 12, I got into making jewelry with beads, and this has been a passion. Mm -hmm. um, but for years, I'm, I'm 40 now, and I started at 12. And, you know, it never really went anywhere. But I do, I continue to make stuff. I, I make stuff. I have sold a few things lately um, because I'm paying more attention to it. I've invested a lot of money in buying beads, tools, different things, packaging, all kinds of things. Because I know one day it will come through. I actually sell on, I sell on um, Shop Dominica. I have a shop there, just a few things because I feel I'm just testing it out. Um, but if I have to be honest with myself, I know that there's a confidence factor. There is a fear factor that I have to deal with. Fear of success, fear of, you know, I know that people have been hindering me. And so it's like, if I do this, if they find out I'm doing this, they might try something. And, you know, I just want to be at peace. I don't want to have to deal with no attacks, none of these things anymore. And so I just, you know, I'm not um, attacking it as I know I would want. I mean, I have other things going on. I'm studying family, all these things. I have other things going on. But this is my passion. Doing these things are always on my mind and in my heart. And I always say, you know, what really attracted me to, to what you were saying tonight, I always say that, you know, when people wear my jewelry, I want, I want it, I want the Holy Spirit to be on this, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God to be on this, to do something in their lives. And today, um, I, I fast forward in. So another passion of mine I've had, another dream is to print t-shirts. And I've had this dream for about 20 years. Um, I remember when I just started working on my downtime, I would go into Microsoft Word and just design little quotes. I was just getting into um, designing on the computer and I would design quotes, um, nice sayings, funny sayings that people could wear on their t-shirts. And I remember I had pages upon pages of that just there on the computer. And... I remember the first time I discovered this machine called the Cricut cutting machine. I wanted it and I've wanted one for years and I got one last year and I got a heat press this year, um, in the beginning of the year. And so I am starting with this, this I'm trying to calm myself and not get emotional um, because 20 years I wanted to do this thing and God has provided the equipment, the tools, and it's just me now to go ahead and do. Um, this morning, when I was opening some clothes this morning, and I said, Father, I want people to wear my T-shirts, and I want them to realize that every time they have it on, there's something different. There is favor. They're having a good day. Something good happens to them. I want them to know it's something on that t shirt and I want it to be you. I want it to be your presence. And you alluded to that tonight. And it, it just struck my heart that, you know, the Holy Spirit is really in this with me. And the Holy Spirit is really here with us tonight, you know. And I am so grateful and thankful for that encouragement. Um, Yesterday, yesterday was Monday. Monday, I wore a T-shirt that I, I designed myself. And it, it had Jesus. It's Jesus in big. It's a word cloud with Jesus. And all what he is to us, um, our Redeemer, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, a whole set of words. Mm -hmm. And a lady met me in the afternoon and she told me, that's the second time I'm seeing you for the day. And for whatever reason, I felt that was weird. And then the Holy Spirit, I just heard in my spirit, it's your shirt. So she was attracted to my shirt. And then when I looked at her, I said, oh, she looks like a... You know, I, I I hope I didn't judge wrongly, but the way she was, she dressed her with this position, she looked like a Christian. And so I see it must have attracted her. And so, um, you know, before I used to think of, you know, I want to print shirts with funny sayings and, 
you know, nice quotes and so, but what I want to do now is anything that will bring Jesus to the forefront, his name, scriptures, encouraging scriptural quotes, encouraging words from men of God. You know, this is what I want to put on my t-shirts and put out there. I mean, yes, I can still do funny things. And um, I printed one yesterday with the name of our country, the card name for our country. And, you know, I just thank God that tonight he encouraged me. Um, you know, I have a degree in entrepreneurship and I do not have a business. And this has bothered me for so long because I'm, I studied this thing. What is wrong? What is going on? You know, I it's what is hindering my progress? How do you at 12 years have a passion and you're growing for all your life and your passion cannot cannot be if there's no visibility there is no you have these gifts you have this time people you know the few people who know about it oh you you do so much you do so well it's so beautiful it's you know but it's just not all there and I know there is a hinder some hindrance That's you know sweet. I am hmm? number one you're in Dominica so yes. I want to connect you to prophetess Nabina okay that's the first thing so right now Prophetess Nabina, I want you to connect to Sister Naomi because that connection is going to break forth your bring forth your business. That's number one. Number two, how much is mm. for one of your shirts? How much in EC? Um, well, the one that I have printed for sale is 45. Okay, how much is a shirt for me? But with anywhere between 45 and 50, it depends on what I print it with. Like you have different printing materials. So, okay. it, and everything I have to order from the States. All There's right. nothing okay. I get here. So, I want a shirt. <laughs> yes. No, I want a shirt. Design a shirt for me. Yes. Yes. Design a nice shirt for me with something, you know, surrounding the word of God and the glory of God, whatever. I leave that in your spirit, yes, to design a shirt for me. And let, let my shirt say 10 times better, yes? <laughs> put 10 times better on my shirt. I don't know how you're going to design it, but put, 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 put a 10 times better on my shirt, okay? And design my shirt for me and give my shirt to Prophetess Nabina, yes? Good, yes. Do it, yeah, do it quickly, oh, yes. <laughs> Prophetess yes. Nabina. Please, please connect with this <laughs> lady. Um, I don't know if you know where she is in Dominica or you how to find her. Okay, please connect with her. Yeah, I, I want my shirt and I will pay for my shirt. You're not giving me this. <laughs> I am paying for it as a seed to unlock your business by the grace of God. Amen. And also, also Amen. Prophet, sorry, um, Pastor Diane and myself want one as well. Okay, so, so I will contact uh, you. I will yes. contact you in the morning to to put our yes. order in. Yes, right there. So three shirts right here. Glory room. We 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 want to unlock this business by mm. the grace of God. Me, I want ten times better on my shirt. Yes, I don't know how you're gonna design it. I leave that to your skill, your gift, your grace. I just want my shirt to say ten times better. Amen. Glory to God. And we and we unlock that shirt that business Amen. By, by the grace of God. I guess probably my wife probably want one too. I don't know what she going to want written on hers. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mighty what you want yours to say. <laughs> Mighty. Um, I'm just doing in there like that. Oh, I don't know. I guess Mighty has to think about it, Prophet. So Mighty has to think about it. All right. So don't worry. You, you get your four shirts gonna come. Yes. <laughs> four shirts gonna come. And we, we we support you and we unlock this thing by the grace of God. And this book, I want you to get this book. I want you to get it. Hey, hey, Shaga Bazagada. Yes. So you go straight to day number six, anointed to profit. 
That's the chapter. You read that chapter immediately. Anointed to prophet, mm -hmm. day number six. And you, and you work that chapter and pray those prayers by the grace mm -hmm. of God. And let God do the rest through you by his grace. Amen. Amen. Ten times Jesus. better you shall become. Father, we release your daughter Naomi tonight. The gift you have given her, the grace yeah. you have given her. Lord, that will eventually blossom into service and into ministry. Father, mm -hmm. we thank you. May you now, Lord God, give the unction inside of her. Anything that has fought against the gifts, the skills, the grace that you have put mm -hmm. in her life to make her rich and add no sorrow. We break mm -hmm. that demonic power in the name of right Jesus. now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we decree in Jesus' name that you are hereby mm -hmm. released. We call you by Hallelujah. name. God called Bezalel by name. We call you by name, Naomi, tonight. I answer you, Lord. And we decree that the wisdom of God, the Thank knowledge you. of God, the understanding of the spirit of God is put inside of you for all manner of craft work. I receive it, Lord. Moment. And we I decree that it, begin to blossom into business. It will go into ministry. As, as your work glorifies God, men will begin to see his good works through you and come to glorify him in heaven. Father, release your grace upon your daughter tonight by your power, by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Prophet, amen. can I just say something, man of God? Um, even as you were speaking to the woman of God, um, the Lord just impressed it in my spirit. Naomi, I really want to help. Um, I want to put your, your, your T-shirts in my business place. I have some customers I know that will purchase. Um, we will call, I'll call you tomorrow so that we can discuss it and we can talk about it and so on. Because, um, you know, that's something that I'm always, I was always fascinated about, um, you know, so just that opportunity. I really want to. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. that area. He's writing. So make sure you write it down. Everybody has a story. What's yours? <laughs> Yes, that everybody again? has a story. What's yours? So make sure you get our shirts ready by the grace of God. Everybody, no, everyone has a story. Let me correct that. Everyone has a story. What's yours? Yes, everyone has a story. Comma. Okay. It might be comma inside. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's yours? Yes. Amen. Very beautiful. So Thank there you, we Jesus. go. Glory. Thank you. Thank you, Prophet. Thank you, Prophetess. Amen. 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 Sister Apple, come. Good night, Prophet. Good night, Saints. Good night. Prophet, tonight is just so amazing. I mean, I'm I'm in love with the creative world. And mm -hmm. I remember the first time I read genesis and like i just looked at how god was just so meticulous with the temple how he just blessed bezalel and i remember in 2020 i was like god can can he just bless me <laughs> like bezalel and i remember i mean i was so focused on getting to know god i felt like i kind of lost my passion because before coming to the lord i loved fashion like I would, I would like, I would live on magazines. And so, and so I just naturally had a fashion sense. And what I started to do is like, you know, in the magazines, there'd be like some huge brands and everything that I liked profit was six toes US, 10 toes US, mm -hmm. because I loved runway stuff, like anything that was fabulous. And like you saw fashion on it. And so what came to me was that I would design my own stuff. So like I had a seamstress, like profit, I can't sew. Sewing is not my strength, but mm -hmm. I know exactly how I want it. Like I know the design. Um, and I even went to Edna Manley to learn how to draw. So I know how I want it to look and I know how it should be sewn. Like I know quality when I see it. And so, but I remember like when, when God was drawing me, like I was saying, like when I was in that whole world of fashion profit, I even wanted a gay friend because the gay men knew how to dress. 
and they knew how to like they were like the best stylists you know you wanted one to be a friend but then when the lord was drawing me and like a, like there was like the spirit was just telling me like you know it's like when he was drawing me i just felt empty and like that whole fashion world and glamorous world just became distasteful to me but now that i'm now that the lord has called me and i'm learning like I, there was a teaching on kingdom before no and you know i would have understood that you know the lord can use it with whichever gift so i've been talking to learn and be like lord Apart from God being my passion now, as in, you know, my passion, seeking him and knowing him better, I love fashion. And I remember wanted, wanting to go fashion school, but that didn't work out because, you know, the souls you know, used to go a proper fashion school. But I was like, like I've been talking to the learners, like God, you know, like, cause when you go to the actual fashion school, you can explore, you know, you could become a buyer for a store, you could end up becoming a stylist. Anyway, it could happen. So it's like I've been talking to the Lord and I said, Lord, I know this is where I enjoy because similar to everything that prophetess just speak, like I look at Jamaica and I say, everyone out here just like to wear tight stuff, you know? And it's not about being tight because I believe that um, whatever body type you have, once you know how to dress, once you know like the colors to match you like once you know the proper shirt size the proper pant size you know you can put it together and pe pe be presentable and then i also thought about clothing like i never i never thought about it in this um what you call it you no know, kind of vanity way like i always knew that if you're sad you can dress and no one knows you're sad you know, like you can dress how you like, you can dress and look wealthy and you don't have no money. You can dress and look like you're a business owner. And you don't even own a business. So it's to agree with what you say, profit. Like you must know how to dress the part, you know, like what, like you must know how to present yourself to the world. And there's, there's like a technique to it. And it shows, it shows in us humans, like as we grow, you know, more knowledgeable and in more wisdom and in even more money, we carry ourselves, you know, a different way. We dress, we dress a different way. So tonight has just like, you know, like I'm really excited and, it, you know, it, it, it just says to me, I just need to go into prayer more because I'm like, God, I need to know because this is my passion, like wherever fashion is, because I like anything that like anytime I look at something, like I just want to see it, like I can picture it looking more beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's where my mindset is always at. Like I can look at somebody and say, okay, they need to do this, they need to do that, they need to do that to carry themselves better. I fully understand. So I just really appreciate this. And may God just open lesson up, you know, tonight. The, the, everything needed to, to express you know him I, I i just wrote something seek him with your heart express him with your hands yes feet yes let me say that yes seek with your heart express him Bring with, him with your, hands. your hands follow him follow him with your feet yes glory to god so go and express him you're seeking him now express him and allow him to express himself through you. Yes? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Amen. Prophet. And I love that tagline um, for Prophetess <laughs> Nabina, own your shape. I don't know what can come out of it, but yes. I love that tagline. Own your own shape. Your shape. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Own your shape. <laughs> yes. Amen. 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 All right, Sister Diana Newman. Sorry. Greetings, Prophet. Greetings, everyone. Um, <laughs> this teaching that you did tonight was very eye-opening for me um, <laughs> because there's a lot of creative ideas that I have, and I didn't know that it was, you know, I just figured, hey, I just have creative ideas. I could do this. I could do that. But I didn't know that it was God's given. 
so it's it's a lot of revelation for me but then you also said other things that was a lot of revelation for me as well where your hands your feet and those areas of your body where the enemy can attack you in those areas because that also um I have a business Mm -hmm. and when COVID started I prayed and I said Lord give me creative ideas right if you would permit me uh to show I can show you what I do I I'm so these are for Christian women to wear on their clothing when they're going to church or, you know, wherever, wherever you're going. Yes. So the Lord gave me creative ideas, but then I had a desire to do it. And as I continue, it's like, now I don't even want to go in my office to do it at all. Um, I've been having so many dreams of the enemy attacking my feet and also my head. So Mm -hmm. now this now, you know, kind of opened my understanding a lot more to say, well, the enemy is um, messing with my progress so that I can't progress in anything that I start. Yes. My education, my business, anything that I start is like I start and it's just like, and I just stop and I have no interest to finish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... (laughs) Thank you for the teaching and thank you for kind of opening my mind a whole lot more to what's going on. Now, let me ask you a question. In your, in your family, um, when I say family, I mean mom, mom, dad, grandparents, um, were they in business? Um, my parents growing up, my mom had, you know, like in Jamaica, you have a shop. My, mm-hmm. my parents had that when I was growing up. Okay. And what happened to it? um the shop is still there but we migrated to the united states so the shop was there when my dad went back to live to in jamaica he kind of opened it but it kind of he stopped and then he rented it out to other tenants and i think there's still a tenant in there right as we speak okay but as it relates to your family i mean anyone is in business apart from you I have a brother that he has a few restaurants and I have a nephew that also has a few Jamaican restaurants as well. Okay. So there is, there is the grace upon your family for business. Yes. And in 2015, my husband also, and I, well, my, I say my husband, but I know whatever he does, it, it's mm-hmm. both of us. He had, a, we had a supermarket in Jamaica as well. Um, and it kind of, didn't stay open for long um it kind of closed um to the end of 2018 okay let me go into your heart Mm -hmm. what is it really and truly you if if you should get into business and (laughs) business flourishing what is it that you would want to do with the profits that you earn from your business (laughs) to be honest with you um when i had a when we went to jamaica my husband told me that i'm going to put him in the poor house because i love to give anybody I, anybody comes to me with a sob story i will give as long as you need something i will give even while we had the supermarket um persons came in there and beg and i would just give because that's what i figured you're supposed to do you see what is happening now let me, let me show you why the enemy is fighting. And I ask that question deliberately because the enemy does not fight the thing you do per se, but mm-hmm. he fights what that thing you do will accomplish in others. <sighs> and so he fights your business. And you think that, okay, he's fighting my business. He's fighting... Uh, my destiny is fighting my hands is fighting my 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 work no it's not your work that he's fighting he's fighting what, what your work will do push. because he can't touch what your work will do he's touching your work are you understanding what i'm saying to you yes sir good the devil cannot fight the freedom the revelation the deliverance the understanding that you get from my teaching Mm -hmm. 
okay? But he will try to fight me so that I don't teach. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. So that's what the enemy is fighting. He's fighting you being a giver in the kingdom of God. That's what he's up. Yeah. So let's pray and let's watch God work. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Diana Newman. We thank you for the gift of entrepreneurship. We thank you for the ability you have given to her to see business, Lord, in anything. We thank you, Lord God, for the grace you have given to her to, to, in, in her hands to be able to, to make things and to craft things. We thank you for the Bezalel anointing that is upon your daughter tonight. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you have called her, Lord, to be a giver, that you have called her to be a kingdom financier. And Lord, this is what the enemy has been after. So tonight, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we Lord, we Lord, and we command right now that every attack of the enemy against your daughter's mind, Lord, against her heart, against her head, we command by the power of the Holy Ghost that everything the enemy has been doing and fighting against you with now be broken in the name of Jesus. We command you release by the power of the living God. We command you delivered from every demonic attack, demonic spirits, demonic energies, demonic influences, demonic spells, whatever witchcraft power has been against you. We break it tonight in the name of Jesus. And we release you now. We release the grace of God upon you. We release the gifts of God inside of you. We release the abilities of the spirit given unto you in the name of Jesus. And we call you forth. As a kingdom financier, in the name of Jesus, we call forth your businesses, not just yours, but your husbands and your families. We command your family delivered right now from the powers of darkness, from the limitations of hell. We command you free now, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your power that is resting upon your daughter now. Set her free, in the name of Jesus. Open her eyes. Give her boldness. Give her faith, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, Amen. give her seal again. Let the zeal of the Lord overtake her now. In the name of Jesus, show her ways and inroads. Lord, how to and where to and when to. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Prophet. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Almary, come. After Sister Nahelia, no more hands, please. We will stop there. You're muted, woman of God. You're muted. Okay. All right. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Um, Prophet, mm -hmm. how do you, and, and um, if I may address Prophetess Nabina as well. Yes. Um. How do you know when is the right time to go into business? One, how do you balance your work time and your ministry time? So your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, if you're someone who is multi-talented like myself, um, there are times when I, you know, I would get the, the comments as to how good you're so good at this. Why don't you start a business? But because there's so many, so many things coming. I find that I'm doing stuff that just like in a jiffy, you know, the, 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 the gifts are just popping up, you know, out of the blues. And I'm like, sometimes I'm so amazed at myself, you know, at the end of a product to say, oh my God, I didn't know that I could do this. Um, how, how, <laughs> like yourself, prophet, you, you write books and I'm sure you do other stuff. How do you know how to differentiate which business to go into from which business not to go into? All right. I'll leave that question to Nabina as the businesswoman. Let me answer the spiritual part. Okay. Yes. Um, Here's what the enemy does to us. One word I'm going to give you. 
distractions. Mm -hmm. Distraction is the enemy of discipline. Good? Distraction is the enemy of discipline. Now, when the, that devil is wicked, when he sees the glory of God, he is envious of the glory. He hates anyone who carries the glory. Right? Now, let's explain what is the glory. Yes, sir. Religion teaches us, and let me begin from here. Religion teaches us that the glory is starlight and spangled banners, meaning some uh, dizzle-dazzle thing, light, you know, that, that, is, that is present. That is one aspect of the glory. But let's go into something specific. And it is in the book of Isaiah. Let me jump there quickly. Because I want to read it for you. Isaiah. Hey, Isaiah, where are you? Isaiah chapter 6. Okay? Mm -hmm. In the year King Uzziah died. Now, here's what the seraphim said. The verse six, chapter 6, verse 3. One cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Mm -hmm. If you're a Bible student like me, I would ask one question of this verse. So why is God holy, 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 and the earth isn't filled with his holiness? Why is it filled with this glory? Because glory is the splendor of God manifested in the things that God does. Mm -hmm. Good? Yes, so sir. you are the glory of God in Christ Jesus. Okay. Because God has created a new you, a new creation. The trees are his glory. The rivers is glory. The mountains is glory. The hills, the valleys, everything in the earth is a representation of his glory. Good? Now, yes. holiness is not in the earth yet as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the earth is not filled with holiness, but it's filled with the the representation, the manifestation of God's work. Now, you being a manifestation of God's work will also exhibit God's glory and you will produce God's glory if you remain holy. Okay. All right? Now, the devil was after the glory. But he couldn't get it because he became unholy. Amen. You were perfect in all your ways until iniquity was found in thee and he was kicked out. Now, here is the, here is the, here is the problem. When he now begins to see the glory deposit of God inside of us that could now manifest something that could give God glory, he fights it. And the way he fights it is with distractions because he cannot de-glory you. <laughs> you understand? He yes, can't de-glory you or de-glorify you or, or remove the glorious gift that is inside of you. But what he can do is to distract you so much that you don't pay attention to what God has put inside of you that could bring glory to him. And so you have to now watch out for the distractions that are coming, that are bombarding you. And sometimes we own these distractions as if it is our assignment. Mm -hmm. yes. Anything that fights against the assignment of God in you to bring him glory, you must get rid of it. 
you must okay. deal with it. Because as long as you are nursing that problem, that issue, that distraction, you can never manifest the glory that should come out of you. You can never manifest it because to manifest the glory, it requires discipline. Amen. Yes? Yes, so sir. We have to look at what are the distractions around us? What is it that the enemy is trying to do to cripple me so that I do not manifest the gift and the grace of God that will bring him glory? What is it he's trying to do? And let me tell you, he will attack. He will attack. But if you pray, if you become wise, you will overcome by the grace of God. Thank you the so other, much, sir. The other question can go to Prophet. Um, yes. Um, one thing, though, you can't remove the spiritual from the physical in terms of business. And that is something that we have to always take into consideration because today I was speaking to a friend and before I answer your question, I want to just give you my testimony um, as to how I got in business and, you know, the process that I had to go through as a child of God, amen, as one that God has called in business. Um, am I hearing a feedback? Is it me or is it somebody's mic is on? I'm hearing a feedback. Yes, so as I said, um, yeah, okay. So as, as I was saying that um, you can't separate the two, you know, you have to wait on God. And today I was talking to a very good friend of mine and I said, you know, time is something that a lot of us don't like. We don't like to wait on God. We don't like to wait for the direction of God. And that is very important in business, um, you know, and as, as a mentor for the Dominica Youth Business Trust, what I do, I mentor, you know, small businesses, help them into developing their gift and their, you know, their talent in business. One of the first things I say to them is that don't ever venture into a business that you're not passionate about, because it's going to take you about three to five years before your business can be established. People can trust you. People can trust your brand. Right? It's going to take about three to five years. So during that time, there's going to be up and down. There's going to be roller coasters. There's going to be highs and lows. What do you do in that process? Do you quit? Do you throw in the towel? Or do you keep going? And that is one of the hardest periods. So that's why timing is important. One, you have to ensure that, yes, God is saying no is the time. I remember about um, 12 years ago, when I first started my business, I was working and I had a good job. I was had, I had a good salary. I had a good job. And I remember when it was time for me to, you know, transition into the business arena. And, you know, persons did not understand me making that transition, but I knew I heard from God. And before I went into business, one of the things that I did a whole year before, I, I, sold, I did it in such a way that I created a club. I created a club where I invited people. I gave them cards where they had to have their cards to shop. Women like exclusivity. They like to be exclusive. And I did an exclusive club where persons would come in for the first year. And that was my, that was my, that was my area where I tested the market. That was one of my areas where I wanted to make sure that whatever I go into, that it was, it was sustainable. So I did that. I created a club. I, I had women had their cards. When they come to shop, they, they, they could create accounts. And for you to enter the club, you had to be recommended by one of the club, the club, the club members. Only a club for you. So I, I, I invited like 20 women. And at the end of that one year, I had over 200 women because women were inviting their friends, their family. And because you could only come by invite, they were excited because, you know, oh my God, I want to be involved in something like this. It's unique. Now, a year after this venture, the Lord said to me, it's time to take it up a notch. It's time to open the storefront. And I remember when the Lord said that to me, it was so clear. And when the Lord told me that, I was afraid at first because I was concerned if, you know, how am I going to meet my utilities, rent and all of those different things is high. And, you know, I just went trusting that the Lord said to me, it was time to open. So again, as a child of God, you can't separate the spiritual from the natural. You can't separate waiting on God, the timing of God. You have to pray and seek the face of God. Long story short, 
I had about five businesses during that span of time. I had a bridal store, I had a restaurant, I had a makeup and, and store, <laughs> makeup and, you know, body, pedicure, manic manicures, these kind of things. I had a beauty bar, I had my boutique, just name it. I was so adventurous in business and I went ahead. In 2016, I lost everything. Everything meaning that everything. <laughs> I lost everything. I We had a very terrible category five hurricane and I lost everything that I worked hard for. And woman of God, that was a time when I had to go back to the drawing board. I could easily do two things. I could walk away from all of that or I could go in the direction of my passion. I went in the direction of my passion. I prayed to God about it. I seek the face of God. But I did not understand at the time what God was doing. And I'm saying all of that to make you understand that business is not easy. But at the end of it all, you have to ensure that whatever you're going to do, that God is in it and he's directing in that direction. That was, that's the whole source of what I'm saying. And when I seek the face of God, two years after my business destroyed, the Lord said to me to do your business in, um, in a particular way that is um, not, is not common. He said to me, open a business only by appointment. How do you open a business by appointment? Tell me, woman of God, like, how is that possible? How do you open a boutique by appointment? And, you know, this is not something that you will find. That's the only boutique like my kind in Dominica. The Lord said, open a business. No, COVID did not come yet. Just listen to me, woman of God. COVID was not there yet. That was three years before COVID. The Lord said to me, open a boutique by appointment. Now, I was not heavily involved in ministry as I am right now. I was in ministry, but not as heavy as I am right now. But the Lord was preparing me for what to come. And I did not know that. So I did just what the Lord instructed me to do. I opened by appointment because I had already created my brand for over 10 years. Persons already knew my merchandise. They knew what they were getting. They knew the customer service. I'm very passionate about customer service. And that's again, that's something again, I think every business may we need to touch on customer service because that's something that lacks in businesses. And that is what actually breaks your business and destroy your business, lack of customer service. But that's for another time. Anyhow, um, I went ahead and I forged ahead with the direction, the blueprint that the Lord gave me. And woman of God, hey and behold, three years later, COVID came. No person, no businesses were open because you could not have, you could not have a business open for the entire public to just come in. You had to be sanitized and all of those different networks. But because my business is in my downstairs of my home, I have the luxury to be able to have persons come by appointments and it's out of the whole business arena where persons have to be monitoring you to see if, okay, your business is open because you're not supposed to have more than 10 people in there. I can only bring in one and that's okay because I only have my appointments. So again, that happened. Then guess what? I went into ministry in a, on a heavier weight to the point where I could not be in a business 24 seven, eight hours a day. So I'm just saying to you, you know, that's where God comes in. When you put your business before God, you put your plans before God, you know, whatever business that you want to do, um, Sister Almerin, just put it before God. Pray about it, fast about it. You can't separate the two because you are a child of God. You can't separate the two. Pray about it and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and direct you because the plan that he has for your business is far greater than the plan that you have for your very business. So that is my, my take on it, man of God. Thank you so much. Thank you both very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Prophetess. Well said. And I'm seeing the seminars coming, eh? You, yes, I'm seeing the seminars coming. Told us seminars coming, man. Yes. As you were talking, you know, this, this just came to me. Learn to see opportunity where others see problem. Yes. And I just reflect on day number three of my book, Anointed for Solution. Glory to God. Listen, this, this book, this book, this book, glory to God. This book, Anointed for Solution. Yes, 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 yes. This book, grab this book, read the, the, the chapter, go into the journal, pray the prayers, perform the prophetic actions that are inside there and just watch God work. 
give God something to work with in our life. Our prayers eh, will give God something to work. I was at a prayer breakfast and I heard the man of God and he was preaching. He said, your prayer, put God to work. Your prayer, put angels to work. Your prayer, put men to work. Yes? And the only work you do is prayer. Mighty <laughs> God of Daniel. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So we bless God. And how do we balance it? Well, here is how we balance it. See everything you do as unto the Lord. And if you do that, the balance will come easy. Don't try to separate your life into secular and sacred. Don't, don't do that. That's the biggest mistake you'll make. Your life is sacred. Full stop. That's what the devil wants you to do. And if you do that, problems, problems. No, your life is sacred. And that's it. And once you do that, it shall be well with you. Amen. Amen. Uh, and even as as prophet spoke though, prophet, let's say let me just say one thing before we go. Um, yes. even as you spoke in regards to um, you know, in regards to what is Amarino you know, asking, when you spoke about your gift and you being in business and whatever it is that wherever you are, that your gift to make room for you, and you know, wherever you are, you you should and you reflect the glory of God, you know, mm -hmm. and that is something that I believe that every business should um forge forward and head about to 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 enhance, to harness, you know, the glory of God being seen, being lighted in your business. Because at the end of the day, whatever you do is unto the Lord, as Prophet has rightfully said. And man of God, as you said that, it just makes me remember, you know, even in my business, I have so many women who comes to me who are broken, who are bruised, who, um, who needs prayer, who needs support. And, you know, I found God that I had gone through this process, you know, even in rejection. I mean, I meet so many rejected, battered wives, women. And because of that, because of my area that God has positioned me, I can able to pour into their lives. I can use my business as a place of ministry mm -hmm. that I can pour into their lives. I can help them. Yes, I make money out of it. But at the end of the day, I don't separate it from the work of God. So, at the, so when they come in, you know, sometimes they come in and when they come in, because of the word that they get because of how they are treated again you know it 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 makes them come back it makes them come and they rec recommend my business to other women to other people to their family to their friends and that's listen to me some a lot of my clients come not because of even me advertising but because of word of mouth and word of mouth is the best advertisement that any person can ask for absolutely absolutely god is the one who gives us power to gain wealth and add no sorrow. Your gift will make room for you. And look at the beauty of God. He gives us a gift that causes us to earn. And at the same time, that gift, he uses it for service in the kingdom. And on top of that, we have a reward in heaven that is waiting for us. God is the only one who employs us and pays us two salary for the same work. Glory Amen. To Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Amen. Sister Nahilia, final one. And then we will close for tonight. Good night, saints. Good night, prophet. Good night. Thank you for this teaching tonight because it's um, yesterday. Yesterday it was, um, it prones upon me. We were in a session yesterday at work. And when I looked around me, there are many persons who said that they are believers, right? Mm -hmm. But when there is a meeting for the believers themselves to put their point, we have a problem and to put the solution together and to, to make, um, God himself glorified in all that. What I saw was um, people tend to withdraw. So they'll, they'll talk about the problems, saying these are the issues we are facing. And uh, when the opportunity presents itself, no one wants to speak about it. Mm -hmm. So I was just saying to them, you know, when I look at what is happening in the world today, I said, God, we pray every day, right? 
the church prays every day about issues that are affecting the nation and affecting even Jamaica. I'll, I'll use my country, for example. And, but after prayer, what next? And it's a question I've been asking because we pray and I know God would have given solution after prayer. Absolutely. And uh, I'm not seeing where we are really, after we fast, after we pray, then there must be spoils after battle. So what, is, what are we doing with the spoils that we have received after the battle? Well, maybe we're not and, receiving spoils. Interesting. <laughs> then, then, but anointed for solution. Ten times better. Anointed for solution. Here is here is here is something I wrote in this. Challenges are common in life. Hence, we should never run from them. This is because God may use these same challenges to open doors of promotion for us. Here's the problem. We have never looked at or have been taught rather enough, not saying that it has not been taught, but taught enough that problems in whatever fashion they come are God's invitation tools to promotion. Here's what I continue and say. I call it the promotion mystery. Within this mystery, there are three factors at work. The problem factor, that which is troubling and outside of the league of individuals to solve. The solution factor, the answers others are not able to give. And the separator factor, the grace gives an anointing that distinguish us from others. And I continue in another section of the book. Every problem is an invitation for solution. Now, when you read this book, you will see that I made mention of Daniel and how he was able to tap into the solution of the king's problem. How did he do that? Through prayer. I believe if we diligently mm -hmm. and um, do it with our heart, with the right motive, God will give us solutions to issues that we are facing. He will give us solutions to issues that we are facing. And strategies, well, coming with the solutions are strategies, right? And um, so one, we must pray with the right motive. And the motive must always be to glorify God and not to exalt self. Two, we must be willing to implement the strategy because a lot of times when we pray, God answers, but we don't implement because the answer sounds too stupid. It sounds too foolish. And that's, and that's usually the problem because God's solutions to problems are not the strategies of the world. Yes? Go and take yes. Jericho, but march around it. One day, and on this, for seven days, and on the seventh day, you march around it seven days and the walls gonna collapse. <laughs> that sound like common like a, like a common sense military strategy to you no it wasn't <laughs> but watch what happened when god gave joshua the strategy from the day from the time god gave joshua the strategy to the collapse of the wall of jericho there it took about seven days for a massive earthquake to happen that shook jericho and cause the walls to sink down, like they just drop into a sinking sand, like a hand just push them down into, into the earth. That's, that's, the, that's how the walls of Jericho look, right? Who else knew that an earthquake was going to happen in seven days time from the prophetic decree? And all God was asking for was their obedience to do what he said. Who knows if it was the marching that triggered the earthquake? We don't know. You understand? But the obedience to the strategy brought the solution. So we must be willing to implement God's strategy to get God's solution. Are you following what I'm saying to you? And if yeah. we are not willing to do that, then leave prayer alone. Because prayer is a solution. 
Some people don't think prayer is a solution. Prayer is a solution. In fact, it is the solution because we are praying to the almighty God who has all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Yes. Yeah. Another thing, Prophet, um, this is about me, myself. Mm -hmm. I, I can spot mm -hmm. issues from afar and, mm -hmm. and the solutions will just come immediately. Yes. And I have been trying over the past two years because most of my business would have been with people with the, in the world, mm -hmm. right? And they have been benefiting from the gift that God has given me. But I would have um, engaged some believers in helping them in their business in getting it to another level. But the thing is, what I've realized is the believers tend not to want to pay, right? Whilst the people in the world, they will pay because they see um, the benefit in the long term. And uh, because I would have done jobs for believers and till today, I have not been paid. Okay, can I say something to you? Sure. Believers are not thieves, churchgoers are. I stand corrected, sir. So you have a problem with churchgoers, not believers, okay? You need to reconcile and just come to terms with the fact that, listen, what God has given to you is not confined. Proverbs chapter um, 18 and verse 6. A man's gift makes what? Room for him and brings him before great men. It never said that your gift don't bring you before Christians. It said great men. Great men exist in church. Great men exist outside of church. Anywhere great men are located, that your gift should locate, that's where your gift will locate them. Whether they are in the world or they are in the church, we must never limit ourselves. Never. You understand? To say, oh, we want church to support and believers to support. Listen, <laughs> until Christians get the concept of kingdom right in their head, you will continue to have that problem. Until then, I will not be bound by their mental constraints and their, and their lack of revelation and understanding. Until then, I shall not be bound. Okay? So mm -hmm. anyway, my gift makes room for me. By the grace of God, I go in. Good? Because that's what the Bible says. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Are you following what I'm saying to you? Yes, prophet. So, you know, um, don't limit yourself. And sometimes we, you know, we love what we do, but we don't have no structure in place. Mm. Structure is important. You understand? If people think they can take your things and don't pay you, that's what they're going to do to you. But if you have a structure in place that does not lend to that, then they will not abuse you. Okay? So people will treat you how they see you and by the atmosphere mm -hmm. that you in their eyes. And you have to be careful. Business is business. Business and spirit. Though they work together, they are two separate things. Yes? In, in the realm of the spirit, we give everything. We give away everything without price and without reward because we are called to serve. In the realm of business, we are called to make money. <laughs> yes? So, yes. And if I don't make money, I can't serve. And if I don't serve, I can't make money. The two of them go hand in hand, you know. But you must know the realms in which each function and the, and the laws 
that operate within both realms. Okay? So take your mind off of them religious folk who are, you know, secret thieves. God will judge them. You know, you know them now. So guess what? Mosquito bite you on your hand once. Don't make him bite you on your hand a second time. Mm -mm. Yes. Amen. I think I, Amen. I have to stop here for tonight. Um, I know you all have loved tonight's lesson, but my body is screaming more than your love for the lesson right now. <laughs> so with that said, I thank you so much for being a part of tonight. And I know you're looking forward to the recording and it will be posted so that you can go back to it and access deeper revelations by his grace. God bless you. Pastor Diana, over to you.